soap. We, advanced humans, all use soap in our daily lives to wash ourselves, our properties, dishes, clothes, lamps, our household. And then there's the industry, which uses it as a component of lubricants and thickeners. It is very integral to modern society that many people consider this a necessity because this is necessary for one's hygiene. Soap is a natural product and can come in all forms of shapes and smell. But let's not mix up ourselves with detergents, which is made synthetically. In the olden days, soap was made with fats and ashes. But nowadays we just mix lye, distilled water, oils, maybe tallows all together. Now, some may wonder how soap came to be and who first invented it. Well, our story starts in the very ancient civilization of Babylon. Back in as far as 2800 BC, Babylons were recorded to have been using soap for hygienic purposes. They took health very seriously, and doctors had to make sure they had their patients not die, lest they face punishment according to the code of law. Anyways, there were clay cylinders that were found that had soap-like materials on them. They were inscribed with a saying that goes, Fats boil with ashes. It was really convenient of them to write those, I must say. Calling back from Babylon, there's a very interesting legend of a healing room. River Tiber was said to have soap like materials that were found there, and all of that came from Sapo Hill, an area for animal sacrifices. It is said that rain would wash down the fats and ashes from the hill down to the river. Women found this material to help clean their clothes more easily, and so the material was named after the hill itself. But soap wasn't exclusive to Rome or Babylon. Egypt knew about soap and used it to bathe and treat skin diseases, similar to the way Babylon used soap. Places like Spain and France were also early manufacturers of soap. It wasn't until the fall of Rome that hygienic practices declined. As such, general cleanliness in Europe dropped, and it contributed to illnesses and outbreaks such as the infamous Black Death that swept through Europe and Asia in the mid-1300s. This would remain the same until the 17th century, where it made its comeback to Europe. Then, in 1791, some French chemist named Nicolas Leblanc came about and patented a soap-making process. This amazing discovery made soap making one of the fastest growing industries in America by 1850. Since then, soap making has been on the run and we are still making them today. I had a dream of starting a soap business all my life. And now, I have the money to start a business. I love soap so much, I love to see people drop it. What a coincidence, I love to drop soap. Okay, okay, you follow me now. Oh yeah. I'm so glad to have you guys work for me with my upcoming company. I've always been fascinated about soap, and I'm hoping this company will grow to be a very successful company. And now, let me introduce to you the current team I have gathered. First of all, this is my good friend Jin Hao, an accountant I have hired for my company. Hello, I can take care of all the company accounting matters and I can give financial advice based on the reports produced. Next is Ji Sheng. He is my old classmate and will be employed under me. What's up? And we also have Yi Qian, who is the most knowledgeable at making soap. She has made homemade soap for herself for many years already. I came here to make my soap sold in shops. Finally, we have Mui. She volunteered to help in my company when she heard I was going to start a company. Hey yo! I hope we can work together and be good friends. And we also have Bing Yin, which is the most hardworking man, and he is my favorite worker. 
Yes, sir. I believe that my company can become one of the greatest companies in Malaysia. That's great. I have faith in your company. I will do my best to make the best soap that people will consume. I have a question though, boss. Do you want to be a reseller or manufacturer? Huh? Boss, you have to decide whether you want to be a reseller company or a manufacturer company. That way, we can decide on what to do as a company when we run. Huh, what is that? I only want to make a company that sells soap. Well, being a reseller and being a manufacturer are two different things. Manufacturers will be mass producing soap to sell. Resellers will buy soaps from manufacturing companies and resell them. Either path will need different types of employment. For example, manufacturers need a lot of labor and machinery to produce soap, while resellers only need to pre uh, people such as cashiers and lorries to do their business. Both companies also need to have different management. Manufacturers have to deal with the safety of workers and make sure machines are working as they should be. Resellers only have to manage the sorting of products and the cleanliness of the shop. I see. I guess I think our business is decision heavy. In that case, what do you guys think about this? Huh, of course we want to be a reseller. Hmm, why are you so confident about being a reseller? Uh, use your brain a bit. Being a reseller, we won't have any liability. The reason being, should the product be defective, then it is the producer who will bear the loss of, the re of replacing the product. See? We wouldn't have trouble at our products in the in the future because the people who manufacture the soaps will be blamed. Our reputation will not be affected. Oh no no no. Manufacturing is infinitely better in so many ways. The cost of their soap seems cheap, but their profit margin could be huge. Would we end up paying more than the cost of production of soap? Never mind import tariffs and transportation costs. The selling price of the soap when resold is definitely going to be more expensive than the cost of the soap bought. What happens if customers are discouraged from buying due to the prices we sell? No worries. We can choose whatever products we want to sell. If we do not find a product suitable for our business, we simply will not sell it. We can also purchase them at fair prices and sell them at our own cost. It doesn't really matter to me if the selling price is marked up higher. So, as long as we can earn back profits, nothing is holding us back when it comes to setting up prices. True, but being a reseller, we need to spend time and effort into customer service. Wow, I don't want to deal with those customers law. It's time consuming and unnecessary, and I'm not dedicated enough to give good customer service. Plus, if we become resellers, we will have lots of competition with other resellers too. Since we may be selling similar products, Furthermore, some products are more profitable than others. Our portfolio must be wide enough to cover such losses. Are you confident that we can succeed? Eh? Uh, I think being a reseller gives us a higher chance of succeeding than being a manufacturer. Being a manufacturer means that we need to come up with our own recipes for our soaps. And we have to be unique enough to stand out in the market. Resellers just need a few cashiers and staff to take care of the stocks. But Manufacturers need a huge group of labors, supervisors, managers, and others. Not just that, purchasing machinery can be very expensive. This is going to cost us more money, would it not? That would mean we have to work harder to meet our profit margin. That's right, I agree with this. Not just that, but it's also harder to exert control over our factories. Since we have to take care of so many labor and machineries, anything could one day turn disastrous. That can what affect our reputation and our production process, which could in turn cause fewer outputs to be made. This can take the economies of skill for us and we will have higher costs. Also, the ingredient use will be a lot. It will cost us a lot of inventories to deal with. I'm aware of the risk of being a manufacturer, but I believe the benefits of being a manufacturer are bigger than the risk. Manufacturers can achieve economies of scale by producing large quantities of soap, which means our cost of production will decrease. It's because of this that we need to have an efficient production process so that we can make our products in a short time. But it is not a bad thing as we will be able to meet the demand of our consumers and we will produce a good reputation among our customers. I agree to this. In addition to this, being a manufacturer allows for flexibility for our production process and changes in raw materials. This helps us we can immediately respond to customer complaints towards our product. If we were resellers, 
We have needed to find other products to sell and the soap we sell is no longer profitable. Okay, okay. So, I guess we'll be a manufacturer. By the way, did anyone know what's all the cost to manufacture a soap? Yes, I know boss. Actually, the term that manufacturers use is direct material and direct wages. Direct wages is the cost of wages of the people who are employed in a factory making the goods. So, we will pay our workers a salary of about RM1000 per month. And for the direct material, it's the cost of raw materials to make the finished goods. Our material we'll be using is coconut oil, olive oil, palm oil, distilled water and light. So, in my calculation, the total price for all the material to make one soap will be around RM16. So, for one soap, we'll need 8 ounces of coconut oil, which costs 1 ringgit and 50 cents. 15 ounce of olive oil, 11 ringgit and 90 cents. 11 ounce of palm oil, 1 ringgit and 25 cents. And for the light, it will be 1 ringgit and 77 cents. Hmm. By the way, there's a lot of factories at this place. Don't you think soap is kind of hard to make though? No, make soap very easy only. Even for factories, I went to interview the most famous soap company. How they make soap, what's their secret. And I tell you, we can be better. Let me show you the recording. Below subtitles or summary of what Mr. YC said. Good afternoon, sir. I'm from DPUT Soap here to interview you about your company, Any Mini Money More Soap. I'd like to ask, how do you guys make your soap in your company? What's the secret behind making such good soap? Good afternoon, miss. Nice to meet you. As you can see, it's very easy to make many, many soap. First, you need a set of measuring spoon for air ringgit and a temple glass measuring jug for 20 air ringgit and a heat resistant glass storage bowl for 90 ringgit and you need a thing that is called cream mixing scrapper for 2 ringgit which Nook call it silicon spatula and you need another heat resistant spoon and lastly you need the ultimate hand blender for 44 ringgit and these are the only things to make a salt it's easy and cheap to get it in addition, you will need to buy the ingredient for making the salt. Our company uses coconut, olive, palm oil, light and distilled water to make a salt. In our current market, coconut oil costs 0 0.0065 cents per, per gram and olive oil costs 28 ringgit per kg. Total how much I can't remember already so I think you can calculate yourself. Step 1 is what we call ponifications. Repeat after me. Pornifications. You will need a mixture of coconut oil and tallow, mix it with sodium hydroxide, then heat it. The soap they produce is the salt of long chain carboxylic acid chemistry. Then step two is glycerin removal. Glycerin is more valuable than soap, so most of it is removed after mixing. Only some is left in the soap to help make it soft and smooth. Soap is not very soluble in salt water, whereas glycerin is. So salt is added to the wet soap, causing it to separate out into soap and glycerin in the salt water. Step 3 is salt purification. Any remaining sodium hydroxide is neutralized with weak acids such as citric acid and two thirds of the remaining water removed. Finally, step number 4, the finishing. Additives such as preservatives like color fragrances are added and mixed in with soap to give it an addictive but delicate and faint not too heady or overpowering scent and is shaped into little brass for seal. So like what I said, soap is very easy to make and you can become very rich. That's all. Oh, sounds easy. With only so little steps, you can already make soap. Thank you sir for taking your time for this interview. It really is insightful to hear the process of making soap. Now let me demonstrate to you guys. Pour sodium hydroxide into distilled water. Keep stirring while adding sodium hydroxide so that it doesn't stick on the bowl. The temperature will rise to about 98 degrees Celsius, so do not use plastic. After mixing, 
Let it cool down for 20 to 30 minutes. While the solution is cooling down, let's prepare the oil. Then, mix the three types of oil together. It's the time where you can add some colour or fragrances. After mixing, pour the oil into a big container. Make sure to use a stick blender to blend. Slowly pour the sodium hydroxide solution into the container while mixing. Mix the batter until the batter is thick and no color difference. After that, pour the batter into a box or any mold. But make sure to use non-stick containers and not non-stick coating containers. When it's smooth enough, cover the top with anything and make sure it doesn't touch the batter. And then use a towel to wrap it up. And leave it in room temperature for 48 hours. It's indeed very easy to make soap. Are you sure that dude that you interview is the CEO? He sounds like a worker to me. I'm scared he wants to kill us, cause is it like a dangerous substance? Yes, it is dangerous during the process of making. If you are not careful with mixing sodium hydroxide with water, it will cause burns on your skin and eyes. And inhaling the fumes when mixing with water can harm your lungs. For this reason, when we open up our factory, we need to take safety precautions, such as wearing safety gloves and goggles, plus keeping your head away from the fumes. Seriously, otherwise our workers will suffer harm. Also, we should warn them not to swallow the light at all. It can burn your esophagus and kill you. Oh my god, does that mean the soap is dangerous? No, as a matter of fact, you haven't seen anyone die from using soap, have you? No, but based on what Yi Chen said, it doesn't sound safe. 
Don't worry, the final product should not have any sodium hydroxide left after the making process. All of the lye would have been reacted with the fats, which makes soap safe to use. Oh, that's very good. Alright, now that that is settled, I think it is the time we assign roles for each of us here and decide on the salaries each of you will be receiving. We'll start with Jin Hao. Since he's the accountant, I'll give you a salary of 4250 4, per month. Is that okay with you? Alright, I'm fine with it. Then, let's decide on the rest of you. First of all, we need to decide our roles we play in the company. I need a maintenance staff, factory cleaner, supervisor, and a lead direct labor. Can I be the supervisor? Sure, but you have to be supervising the workers when they are working. Are you up for the job? Yes, I can. I have experienced as a supervisor before, so I can do the job. Awesome! You will be receiving a salary of 1,900 per month. Is it okay? Yeah, I'm good. Alright, I think Yi Chen will be good leader for our workers, so I assigned her as direct labor. You'll be leading them to the waste of the soap. Sure, boss. Okay, your salary will be 1,000 ringgit per month. Is that okay? Yeah, I'm fine with it. Alright, we were left in the maintenance staff and the factory cleaner. I think Mui should be the maintenance staff since she can do maintenance well. Nice. Your salary will be uh, 1,900 ringgit per month. Alright, that's a-okay. So, it's only Jisheng left. You, then shall be a factory cleaner with a salary of 1,400 ringgit per month. What the f- Okay, okay, that is better. Now we shall- Wait, what about you, boss? <laughs> boss, you open a business to earn money. You can't tell me you're not going to have some profit to earn. I heard the highest salary for a CEO will be 6.7 million per month. So, I think I will take that. If it suits you, I guess. Okay, so everything is settled now. Let us celebrate now. Hooray! 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 Mr. Yap Bing Yen. Oh, whoops. <laughs> oh, Laila. And now, I have the money to start a business. I've loved so, so much. I love soap so much. I love to... Oh. <laughs> 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 Okay, your salary will be thousand ringgit. Ringgit, you feel how much you pay? You feel how much salary? Ah ha! Ringgit, stop! Ah, you want to ten thousand ringgit? This amount. Now we shall. Oh! Wow. Jin Hao is very awkward. Wait, what about you, boss? Fuck you! <laughs> <laughs> Highest salary for a C CEO will be 1,000 ringgit per month. Stop! <laughs> Stop it! <laughs> <laughs> that was good, man! Oh no. Fuck you, Ming Yen. 